you are welcome. I am speaking to Giovanna, my um, top athlete who's come back from doing the <laughs> 5K. Well, that's 10 days ago now. Can you believe it? So Mallorca 225, you'll tell us a little bit more about it, but 225 kilometers in one day. <laughs> and what's about 4,000 meters of elevation? Is that right? Just under, yeah. 3,800, 900, something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just to you, I was gripped, gripped to the tracker when you were doing it, going because, <laughs> and we'll come on to this. But there are three distances you can do, and you were so toying with, can I do the two two five, or will I do the one six seven? And there's an opportunity to change your mind on this route. But can I also remind you that when you first first spoke about doing this, it was in a feedback with me in October last year when you saw it as a little bit of a pipe dream. Do, do you think I could maybe, I'd love to do the Mallorca 225 and here we are and you've done it. <laughs> so amazing, I'm so proud of you. I can't say that enough. So let's kick off by saying, and that there's different things that will fall into, these are rough headings, but if I sort of say, let's go with highlights and lowlights of your big adventure. Now this can be from, it's such a big experience because for you, this was the first time you'd done a big event like this, wasn't it? So you you haven't done anything like, you know, a, a lot of us are used to doing, you know, triathlons or uh, some cycling races and things. But this was a whole new experience. So from going abroad with your bike and all of that, it was new. So what what, what do you, let's, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with lowlights or highlights? <laughs> uh, I will start with highlights. Um, and it's actually quite tricky because I don't. I haven't actually come up with any low lights, so I don't know if I have mentioned any. And if I have, please remind me. <laughs> uh, but I'm thinking mm, low lights. <laughs> um, yes, as you said, Denise, um, this was my first event ever. I've never traveled with my bike in a bag. I have traveled with my bike at the back of the car, um, but I've never put my bike apart. Um, so to actually put it in a bag and travel and stuff like that. Um, I also had never seen a bike bag, <laughs> so um, so when I went to go and pick it up and they said, oh, who's going to pack it for you? I said, what do you mean who's going to pack it for me? Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Is that difficult? Um, so, so I must say that um, it's not like I research how am I going to do this, how am I going to do that, and all of that stuff. It kind of, every time I gave a step, there was like, oh, I have to ask some questions here. Um, which was pretty much how this happened you know like some people probably plan things well ahead and know the entire journey for me has been about like what's next and and what do i have to deal with now and how do i deal with it um so so i think the most incredible thing for me running up to the event was all the people that i that suddenly kind of turn up in my life that really helped me give me the last push to make this happen. Um, so as you know, I had, I was very, um, what's the word? I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to do the event. Um, I had issues, maybe those are my low lights issues, that my passport wasn't coming on time, um, that I had health issues in the run up to the event, which meant that probably the last six weeks or so prior to the event, I wasn't putting in the miles that I needed to be able to put in for the training um, to get this done. Um, then, uh, you know, I then was filled with doubt because obviously not putting in the, um, the miles, but also knowing that I wasn't feeling strong enough um, and that I just couldn't see my body coming back to me, you know, with the strength. Um, then it was kind of, I didn't want to get overexcited about anything. Like I was in Mallorca and I still wasn't overexcited because it was like, I don't even know if I can ride on the day. Cause I don't know if I'm going to wake up feeling tired, exhausted, or whether I'm going to be able to wake up and say, yeah. Um, but then, you know, it was like, I had lots of angels starting with you, <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. And then you introducing me to your friends here who then helped me put the bike together and introduce me to somebody else who was going to do the ride and then running into people who, you know, out of the blue, who turned out that they were also going to Mallorca and they were very welcoming and saying, yeah, you know, be part of our team. And then at the airport, having to wait for quite some time for the taxi, but then that gave me the opportunity to meet lots of people who had 
you know, who were coming to the event, and it was at least five of us who I met as well, who were coming, um, staying in the same hotel. Um, and, and they all had beautiful messages of support and, you know, new things that you learned at the last minute, but are really helpful. Um, you know, the day before the event, there were two really important things for me. Um, one was acknowledging that I was feeling wobbly. Um, and you had given me a card that said, you know, when you, if you feel a little wobble, remember that little bit of magic inside me. And I was like, I feel wobble, wobbly, uh, and I am going to allow myself to be vulnerable in front of others. And, and I did. And I had met Stuart and Jake, who, were, who are from Scotland, and I went up to them and said, I I'm actually not sure what I'm feeling, but I'm feeling really wobbly inside. I don't know whether it's anxiety, fear, what is happening. And they were beautiful and they sat there and said to me, um, you know, I mean, we spent like an hour that day talking. Um, but just to summarize it, they said to me, the important thing is that when you come back that day, you can look at the day and say, I gave everything I could have given. Mm. And and that stayed with me. You know, you had said, have your mantras with you and whatever. And I probably forgot all my mantras. <laughs> and the only mantra I had on that day is, I just want to come back and think I did everything I could have done. And that was it. And, and the other thing was, I want to do what we always do when we're in the mountain, which is look up and enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that's what mountains are for me. You know, there's there's two reasons for that one is because when you look up and you enjoy and you're climbing um you can open up your chest and that actually gives your lung capacity you know more room <laughs> for more air to come into your lungs and and i think i use it in that way you know to inspire of why i'm doing this it's just because it's so beautiful to be in nature but then the second thing is because your lungs have more ability to breathe um, yeah so so having those beautiful things, meeting all these people along the way, for me, was like the biggest highlight, the biggest, by far the biggest highlight, you know, everybody with a story, everybody with a reason, everybody with a fear, even super strong people, they all were talking about the same thing. Am I going to be able to meet the cutoff? Um, am I going to be able to do the right at the right time? Is there something going to happen on, along the way that means I'm not going to be able to complete? And realizing that everybody has a story and everybody, no matter how strong they are, they also feel that also makes you feel like you're not different. You know, you, you're not weaker. You're not, you know, that sort of thing. Um, that was really beautiful. Um, I think um, the other huge highlight <laughs> was riding in a peloton uh, at really quite good speed when we started. And that's when I realized that, yeah, early morning training pays off, you know, race training pays off because it was like going on a pace line, going in a peloton, knowing how to ride really close to somebody and behind somebody else's wheel and feel safe mm -hmm. when people were much taller than me and I could certainly not see, you know, over their heads. And you're just trusting everybody around you to do the right thing. Um, and I just gave everything I had to make sure I met that um, cutoff. And that included riding really fast in the peloton and then climbing as well as I could. Um, so maybe the only low light was climb number four or five before the, um, before the um, cutoff. I felt I had not been hydrating enough because I had made the choice not to um, drain, not to stop for um, for filling up the bottles at 50k, mm -hmm. um, and I did take an extra bottle with me in my pocket, in my yeah, in my back pocket, um, and but I was sipping it very slowly, um, and then in one of those climbs, I just thought, oh my god, I don't know if I if I've got it in me a eh? because I had pushed so hard, and b whether I uh, <laughs> whether I had been hydrating enough, and it was getting hotter and hotter. Yeah, that's that's what I can tell you about. Wow, that's amazing. Right. <laughs> and it really paints that picture of it. I think because, as I say, that those things that some of us take for granted about 
taking breaking down your bike and all of the prep and that that can make you feel really anxious beforehand I mean anybody even people have done it before you're like oh god and all of the the lead up and those people around you can either make you feel good or make you feel more anxious because you know people are sort of talking and worrying and things so I'm I would expect nothing less than you to embrace all that energy and so uh, take all that on board and um and what you said about the mountains and looking up it's well my friend Joe that you know helped you out with the bike bag and so on his big thing is do not become a tarmac starer. People miss out so much of the ride and the 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 this whole journey by sort of just looking at their garment and their stats and all of that. And and you think, no, it's it's just it's it's out other way. You've missed it. You've missed half of the whole excitement, haven't you, really, if you've excitement. Absolutely. And also having the opportunity to actually, you know, like once once the cutoff, once I did the cutoff, then the ride became more like the sort of riding I know, which is more like just ride rather than on a race <laughs> against the clock um and and then i was also talking to a lot of people on on the way and because i was wearing my top that said colombia it just gave people a chance to come and talk about something i suppose and they're like colombia um and so i met you know lots of awesome people again who always have a story um and they come and speak to you in different languages or they try and speak spanish or you know they tell you they've been to your country or uh, yeah, so I think for me, it must be highlight of any event now and cycling in general is meeting people and hearing those stories. Mm. That's a thing for me. Yeah. And the Columbia top, you see, that takes me back to right 100 when I was thinking, this is horrible, it's pouring with rain. And then your voice behind me going, come on, Scotland. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all good. Pietism. Right, so I'm going the, to the come on to another topic, a little area, which is quite probably close to your heart. So I know, here you go, there's a little, there's a little spoiler. Um, <laughs> never doubted, um, I've been working with you just over a year now, and I've never doubted your physical ability. Uh, I, think, I think you have, uh, on and off, but um, I think it's so I was just curious to know how you found, uh, especially for races like this, events like this, or you were cycling for over 10 hours. How much of it do you think was physical? It came down to physical and how much came down to the mental and, and how do you think the preparation for both kind of worked for you? Um, that's very interesting. Um, I said to a friend of mine who was also a cyclist, I said, you know, it was my mind that took me up those hills um, because my closest friends who cycle they have seen my progress in the last few months and also they saw the dip in my training and they all worried that how is she going to be able to complete Mallorca um so when I did it I think quite a few people were actually surprised like in amazement that even though I was not able to put the hours I still completed the event and they were like oh my god Giovanna, you actually did it. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. And they're like, how did you do it? And then and then I said to my one of my friends, actually, I think it was my mind, my my mental strength or stubbornness, or you know, I don't know if stubbornness is the word, but um T determination. Yeah. yeah. Determination. Yeah. And and then he said, Yeah, but that doesn't pedal. Mm. You must still have a very strong body if you are able to do this. And you must be really strong physically if you were able to do this because your mind alone cannot take you up. Um, and so I suppose that answers the question of there must be some real physical strength that was behind me that I thought I probably had lost or was not there because of, as I said, not putting in all the hours that I was meant to. Um, but what I know for sure, um, I would not have been able to do it without is the mental strength. Mm. So when I was on the ride itself, I had no thoughts. Um, and that, this is something I say to you normally um, that happens, um, you know, that when I'm riding, I really go into that place of, you know, if I manage to go at the right speed and all of that, I go to that place where, um, <clears throat> where there's kind of no thoughts and and interestingly enough this was 10 hours of pretty much no thoughts um which is quite remarkable <laughs> because it's like there was no thoughts of 
fear or doubt or like there was no questioning am I going to be able to do this or you know those those, all those doubting thoughts that I have in every training session or whatever they were none of those during the ride during the ride it was like my mind and my body were working together and they became one and they had a go and that was it there was no debating and you and I managed to do that together. You know, like I remember Friday mornings doing hill reps, you know, after two or four or whatever, my brain would be like, why are you doing this? Go home. <laughs> you know, it's cold. It's dark. You can go home now. You've done four. Why do you need to do six? Blah, blah, blah. And one day it was like I sat down with myself and said to my brain, I'm sorry, we're doing this. And you really do not need to give me your opinion. You know, I've chosen to do this. And can you just please shut up? And it was like the brain said, okay, I was trying to protect you, go back to bed. But obviously you don't want to do that. So we're not talking about this anymore. And it literally felt like it was a debate between myself and my brain. Um, and then because I train my mind to do as it's told, um, then my mind decided to support me that way. And from that moment on, and we're talking about December, um, or maybe November, so for the December event, um, my brain decided that, okay, you know, I'm gonna support you in whatever you choose, but I had to train my brain not to try and sabotage me. And and that's how it felt it was in Mallorca. It's like the brain said, okay, you said you're gonna do this, let's do it. No discussion. Uh, it was tamed. And when, and I think you mentioned this in the introduction, there was a split, you know, if you met the cutoff at um, 11, 10 past 11, you needed to be at the cutoff point at 98 kilometers. If you met that cutoff point, then if you turn left, you did the short right, short, <laughs> one, six, eight, <laughs> no kidding. Um, or you could then go to the middle, mid distance or the long ride, which was turning right. Um, and I knew I had pushed really hard. I looked at the sign and I thought, oh, okay, I made the cutoff. That's key miles.net. I've done it. Um, I got emotional. And I thought, now I have the opportunity to go left and do 167, which is still incredibly hard and lots of climbing. Or I do what I had a dream to do. And there was not too much thinking about it. My brain said, you came to do the two to five, off you go. <laughs> and then and then, and then, then it was kind of almost like the opposite to what I had witnessed in myself before. You know, it's like, no, you're not, you're not being bailed by your own brain in this case. <laughs> and, um, but it was because that resilience had been created, you know, before. Mm. Um, and, and I did check in with my body and, um, and the one thing I did not do is I never looked at how much longer do I have to ride, even though it was set up in my Garmin, how many kilometers I have before I reach the end point. I never actually looked. Well, actually, no, I did look and I will come on to that um, maybe later on. Um, mm -hmm. But for 200 kilometers, I didn't look at the Garmin to think how much more do I have to ride. Um, and that was, if, if anything, probably the safest thing for me today. Mm. Um, because I was thinking about what was right in front of me and what hill was coming and how I was going to do the next hill, rather than I've got to ride this distance, because that sounds eternal. Um, so yeah, that's, but to sum it up, you cannot do it if you're really strong, if your mind is not linked to to what you know your body might be really really strong but if your mind is not there there's no chance totally totally yeah. Yeah, it's 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 so interesting isn't it our body our brain can be our biggest s asset or it can also sabotage us as you said you can kind of think and great that this is what training is all about that we train ourselves not only physically but you've really put in the work to train yourself mentally as well because without the two i think anything over for me i don't know what's the sort of benchmark i don't know the two, three hours and beyond that, you're into the sort of endurance territory and then that's, you need to really have your, I, I think that 
mental side comes into it so much more. And like you say, I've seen people who, on the face of it, you don't fall into this, by the way, you've got both going for you. You're very physically strong and mentally strong, but people who look like they're like really super strong in the kind of on the, on the other side, people who look like they, you know, you sort of think they're not going to be able to do it, but then manage to mentally just muscle through and get it done. Or people on the other side that look, look like, you know, do all these events and Iron Men, full Iron Men events, and then just crumble at the first sort of, you know, maybe knock back or or seeing somebody else, possibly seeing the person who doesn't look that strong coming past them. And I've seen that happen, interestingly, where that could derail somebody where they go, well, right, why are they going faster than me? And they've got the, the you know, they've got the mental side going for them. So you really got to balance it out, haven't you? I think, well, yeah. Yeah, and I think you mentioned this to me before I went to the event. You said, don't worry if you see lots of people going past you or something like that. And I think that was really important because in the first, as I said, in the first 100 kilometers, I was going for it, like fast and climbing fast and all of that. But in the fourth climb before the 100K, for fourth or fifth, um, when I started feeling that, oh, my God, I've pushed too hard, I might be running out of liquid uh, water, um, all of that, people started overtaking me. <laughs> and, and that has an effect on you. But I immediately remember that you said, you know, don't think about when people overtake you, that means nothing. I went to that message and it was like, it means nothing. And that said, you park it again. Mm -hmm. so, so it's quite nice to actually rehearse in your mind what an event is like and hear those messages before the um, situation arises because then you're prepared and you, you, you give it a meaning and you give the meaning you want to give it to, you know, to the event. And, and if you think, oh, my God, everybody's passing me, and you give a meaning to I'm being left behind, I'm not being able to complete it, then that's the meaning you give it. If you just think some people are going faster now, and you give no meaning to it, or you give it a positive meaning, then, yeah. then it works for, in your advantage. Definitely. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you said about the preparation, it's interesting because I think, again, you know, with experience, you, you sort of um, – a plan, a, a training plan, a physical training plan is there as the best case scenario. But at the end of the day, nobody, rare, rarely do people follow those things to the letter because life gets in the way or injury gets in the way or whatever it is. And it's really having that kind of, oh, being able to hold your nerve and think, no, I've done enough, I, I've done enough. I haven't, you know, sort of, you did that big recce in Wales, I think, which was invaluable um, for so many reasons, which we'll come on to. But I think that, yeah, just having the confidence to think, oh, hold you an hour if you've lost, you know, a few, few days a week or you're not feeling great. You've still got the base there. And I think that's really important um, that you sort of kept that in your mind and tried to draw on your mental and physical side. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I, I think you're right. Um, there must have been, you know, the groundwork must have been done. Otherwise, you know, I think it would not have been possible yeah um the groundwork you know definitely must have been there um but it was also the trusting um in that case i was trusting more your knowledge i was like if denise thinks i can do this then and she thinks i'm trained then i will go with that and just see if you know if i can do it um so then it was up to me but I had to be led by you saying, you know, no, the grant work is done. Don't worry that you haven't put in the miles because you've been doing this for a long time. Um, so the miles were there, just not in the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, but I had to trust really that it's like, okay, you know, I'm just going to go with, with, with what you, you told me and trust that that was, because there was no way of me knowing that my body could do it. Like there was no way I could know that because I had never done it. Um, and I had never done anything like like this. I think I'd done maybe 170k, but with like half the climbing. So this was way beyond. Um, totally, it's such yeah. an achievement. I mean, I, and I think that the one of the quotes I come back to you with as well, which is interesting, and that because we're always our own biggest critics, our own you know biggest doubters, and that's mm. something I think I first saw in the Wilson and Green tube station which somebody put thought of the day whilst you're doubting your ability other people are applauding how awesome you are and I think that you know we don't often realize that of ourselves 
take somebody else to sort of go, and the stats don't lie, you know, training peaks doesn't lie and all that kind of thing. And she's done it. Look at that. It's amazing. So yeah, well, well I'm gonna come up. So this we're gonna come on to a bit of reflective bit and what's next in a little bit. But first of all, just um to sort of try and group it together. We're gonna key learnings, right? So this could be about, you know, oh, from the lead up to the events, the event itself, anything that you think, wow, I'm glad I did that, or I wish I'd done that differently, or or anything that um because achievements will come on to separately, but just sort of the practicalities of it um, or the mental side. So, so it's anything that you sort of think, right, I've, that's, I've, yeah, I've learned a lot there about myself, about the process, about those sort of things. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think, I, I think one, this is very silly because, you know, I've got a daughter and I probably say this to her all the time. Um, and also with many years of work and stuff, it's something that we probably come across every single day, but it happened again on the bike and on the cycling. And it's, there's so many things you don't even know you don't know. Um, and mm -hmm. there are many things you don't know. Um, mm -hmm. And yet it only takes one time to then know them, <laughs> you know? Um, and it comes on to, you know, like not knowing how to pack a bike and it becomes stressful. <laughs> not knowing how to put it together, it becomes stressful. Not knowing how to take it apart again, it becomes stressful. Not knowing what actually you're protecting it from, why you're wrapping it up and, you know, what is the derailer and how, like, and, and then you realize that actually, if you just let go of the fact that not knowing can be stressful and just know that you don't know, but you're gonna know once you do it once, then you realize that the next time you come across a challenge, you already know that, okay, I don't know this, but there's no point in getting stressed because in a few minutes I will know and it will be past me. And then the next time I try and do it again, I will know already. So why get stressed? Um, and I only say that in hindsight. And I must say with the bike, because they were so many things I didn't know. Like I didn't know how to take the pedals off. I didn't know how to, you know, taking it apart, how to wrap it up, how to check it in on, in the airplane, you know, like all the traveling bits. It was just like, and the first time I was going to do it, it did become quite stressful. And it's like, oh my God, what if it breaks and, you know, on my bike and, and it's like, you know what, <laughs> now that I've done it once, it's like, it really was an experience of, um, there's so many things you don't know, but if you look back, there were so many things you didn't know. Today I was laughing, for example, at the fact that I didn't know that you need to take food when you go cycling with you five <laughs> years ago. And I know it sounds funny, but five years ago, um, I was on the phone with the Dutch guys who took me cycling the first time. <clears throat> and uh, five years ago, less than five years ago, I did my first climb. No. And it was only a six kilometer climb and a 60 kilometer ride. And I was super happy racing my bike up in my hand. I didn't know how to lift up my bike. They had to show me how to lift it up, <laughs> how to turn it around, you know, so I could have a photo. And that same year, five years ago, I did my first 100 kilometers on the bike as well. And and today we spoke on the phone and they, and they said to me, do you remember you, you know, the first half a banana I had on the bike was because one of them shared it with me and they said, maybe you should carry some food with you. Um, so that, that brings me to, you know, learning number one is you don't know what you don't know and what you don't know, you will know once you do it once. So there's no point in getting stressed when you are at the face of not knowing something. Um, and I'm bringing that lesson to everything in my life. Um, the other key learning for me has been fueling properly on the bike. Fueling and drinking on the bike, I think, are life changers. Mm -hmm. um, and they're life changers because um, you become a better rider, but also not fueling has consequences. And I have been there. I have been in rides when it's cold. Uh, zero degrees or two degrees outside 
and you don't feel properly, even if you have the food on you. Sometimes mm -hmm. you forget because your gloves are thick and you don't want to unwrap things or whatever. Um, you forget to feel and then you start feeling your energy dipping and it does take a while for it to come back. So you end up spoiling a ride just because you didn't feel enough. Um, and that also leads to recovery. The better you feel, I can certainly guarantee. You know, I did the two to five and as you know now, I and I know I did it with COVID and not knowing that I had the virus um, lurking or growing inside me. Um, and I did my protein shake right after I finished. I had it in my pocket. I drank it. And the next day, it was like my body didn't know I rode all these climbs and stuff. Like I didn't have muscles that were hurting or soreness or like nothing. And it's not because my body's so magical. It's just, you know, I did my stretches and I did my fueling and everything I needed to do by the book. And that really pays off. Um, so it also means that I have become a more independent writer. Mm -hmm. I feel safe because I think one of the reasons why I didn't feel so safe on long rides by myself, it was because my energy was dipping. Mm -hmm. um, and that gave me that feeling of what if I cannot complete my ride and I'm in the middle of nowhere and I get stranded. Um, when I was in Wales cycling in the middle of nowhere, there were no coffee shops, no stops, no nothing. I had every bit of food that I could possibly need, even if things went wrong. So I was carrying way too much food on me. But it was like, if things go wrong and I need to wait, I need to make sure I've got all the fuel I need. And that made me feel really confident that I could go, you know, long distance. So for me, that has been super important. Um, being vulnerable and sharing your vulnerability with others has also been really important for me. Sharing how you're feeling, like with you, communication with your coach, super important. Communicating what works, what doesn't work, how things are making you feel. It's not just about how your body's responding. I, as you know, for me, mental is a big thing on the bike, a big thing. All my mental learnings, you know, and my sort of what it's contributing to all the other parts of my life is super important so I make sure that that communication is always happening with myself and with you but with other people around as well um finding so relying on others as in finding the knowledge you don't know everything and actually finding other people who know and they can share your experiences can be so inspiring like for example for meeting Laura and knowing what she's done it's like you know obviously learning from you is I have inspiration right at my doorstep um, and allowing yourself to be inspired by what other people do with humbleness um, is so beautiful. Um, and, and then that also inspires you to do other things in life. Um, mental resilience, super important for me, has been one of the key learnings. If your mind is with you, then everything will fall into place. Um, so I before I before I do anything, I check in with my mind where I am and I make sure that my mind is in the right place before I engage in any training now. And listen to your body, mm. I think is the other thing. God. So That's really, I know I put you on the spot there. So that, that was amazing, uh, really mm. good round up. And I think it's funny when you were talking about the, um, well, learnings about the bits about the bike as well, because of you saying and taking all your food when you're in Wales or just about to go there. And you said you've been reading about some guy who stripped his bike of practically every sort of like he thought unnecessary bit of kit or bolts and you're thinking, well, no, what, that, where does that leave you if you're in the middle of the place with like, as you say, with a bit of an issue and no yeah. have food? It's yeah, I think that there's a. Uh, you know when when to make those sort of win gains really and for the for the sake of a few pounds i think much better to be able to finish an event than think you're you're like one pound lighter with what you're carrying on your bike <laughs> yeah absolutely um <laughs> for so, me that is the case <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I was impressed by yeah how far you've come and like all, every element of that. And yeah, when you said taking a protein at the end, it's like yes, <laughs> sort of <laughs> all those things that you kind of yeah, it's practice and practice of everything, isn't it? Because it's not natural to do a lot of these things. It's not natural to eat every twenty minutes, really. It's you know, it's not an everyday life for us. We'd be looking very different than we are. So yeah, no, I think I was really impressed by everything that you've embraced. Right, so speaking of which, we're going to come on to um, reflections and achievements. So obviously, the whole event itself is like the, the massive achievement, um, but there's been achievements all along the way. So uh, it, it does it leads on from learnings, but this is more about like you know your own sort of celebrating yourself uh, and and key things that you want to think that you've you've learned along the way. You've yeah you've achieved along the way. Um, I. I, I think um, one thing that we celebrated, or I had people around me celebrate um, when we all acknowledge what it meant is everybody who was around the table at my hotel, uh, for example, just to use the event itself, um, was there with someone. So they were with a mate, they were with their partner, even if they were not cyclists, you know, husband, wife, whatever. They had another half. Um, with them, supporting them, sharing the moment with, the event with, whatever. Um, and there were quite a few people who had used the same company, so we had like the same tables for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and whatever. I was the only person who was by herself. Um, and um, everybody else had someone, whether they were male or female, it was irrelevant, you know, like they, actually I was the only woman from our group who was doing the ride or the other ones were men um and and yeah so sitting there they all turned around to me one day and said and they were like really looking after me like being super kind and beautiful and stuff and they all kind of turned around and said you know you've already achieved something massive which is you're doing this all by yourself um and stuff and and i thought yeah, actually, that's true. <laughs> I signed up to do this by myself. I, um, you know, decided that I was not going to find a group that was doing this to come with them. I, you know, this, this was my thing. And equally for my training, it was my thing. Obviously, I had beautiful Alison who, in, in some cases, also male, who decided to join me in early morning rides on Friday mornings, um, which was amazing. Um, great partners. Um, but it was mostly like my thing and and that to me was a huge achievement I didn't you know it was my thing and I did it by myself and yes I had a taxi rather than taking a bus and it's not that I was like you know also doing it the difficult way I wasn't sleeping in a tent and I wasn't you know it wasn't about roughing it um I was doing it probably in an easy way um but it was my first event and my and I went you know and I was happy to hang out by myself and make sure that I found help when I needed it which it was many times because I had this huge bag <laughs> with a bike inside, huge <laughs> bag. Like it wasn't like the fancy new bags. This was like a massive, massive bag. So that meant that I had to speak to lots of people to help me carry it, um, but many other things. Um, so a big achievement was actually that. And, and that, you know, you can break it down into lots of other little achievements, like for example, going to Wales, on my own and cycling by myself and finding routes on Komoot and being self-reliant, self-sufficient and all of that. So there was a huge exercise around that and even cycling around in London um, where I went by myself, which wasn't something I was keen on doing in the past. So for me, that it's a huge achievement. Mm. Um, also, because then it leads on to what next, I suppose. Um, but I just now feel much more independent on the bike, independent in terms of planning what to do, knowing that I don't need to be part of a group to do things, um, so I can find things that are meaningful to mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and create my own bucket list for the future, let's so to speak, and, and know that I can find my way. Mm. That's super important. 
Yeah. That's amazing. I know. I think when that really stands out for me in terms of that self reliance, because it's been something that uh, you, you kind of like doubted a bit and you know, what can I do this? But by the same token, I love that your, your attitude to the things like about the bike and breaking the bike down because I thought, Oh, I mean, it, it's information overload. I was kind of cautious about saying, you know, I spoke about, you know, you organise with the bike bag, blah, blah, blah. But then when you start to think about the actual bit by bit components of that, literally of taking your bike down. And then it was when you were there, I thought, well, you always take it on your car. Maybe you haven't done this. But then I was thinking, I don't start because I could have tell horror stories about bikes not going back together properly and thought, let's just not go there, actually. Um, Giovanna has got a winning way with people. We'll manage to find somebody who will help her out. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think you just mentioned something. I also didn't, which probably comes to a surprise if I say this, which is really funny. I didn't know I had my way with people about connecting with people the way I do. Um, and I think Mallorca really showed me how I connect with people. Um, because he was condensed in a few days, and then and then I realized how how I am all about connecting with people, you know, and how I connect with humans, and how I managed to to develop that quickly. And you know, I I don't consider myself a sort of individual, so to speak. You know, we're a community, and we can build community really, really quickly. Um, wow. And that's also really beautiful, you know. And yeah. And I have this huge trust in humanity, I suppose, that I carry with me, as you know, when we're cycling in, a, in some car drives by, you know, <laughs> nobody's out there to get us. It's my, my motto. <laughs> um, I have this huge thing about humanity being beautiful, so. <laughs> it is. I love yeah. That. yeah, a car will go past and toot, and I'm like, what? It's so like going, he's just saying hello. <laughs> I love he's that. just warning us that he's around <laughs> so that we're careful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> you, um, because I know that you know you're, you're you're underplaying it a bit because how much hard work it was on the event with the <laughs> looking at your stats and the speed you were doing and your heart rate. I'm like, wow. Um, but you know the fact that you still managed to reference chatting to people along the route in true Giovanna style. So that's. <laughs> Uh, maybe they were chatting to me rather than me chatting to them. <laughs> I was being a listener. <laughs> oh, no. uh, like a guy, a German guy who came and he spoke beautiful Spanish and he said he'd been to Colombia and, you know, told me all about it. And then he said, I'm a slow climber, but I'm really good at descending because I ride motorbikes and you learn to do the line. And I was like, well, I look forward to you showing me how, how to, you know, I would follow you on the descent. And he just kept talking and I was like, just talk to me and listen. <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> Actually, I can't breathe. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so many issues there. Um, so, right, really, um, if we're putting you on the spot with every one of these, here's the final one, which really does put you on the spot, because we haven't, well, we've talked a little bit about this, but not not since the event. So what next? Um, <laughs> I, the interesting thing is, I don't know. Um, I think that's a fair question, and it's a fair answer, <laughs> hopefully. Um, I... Um, Obviously, I immediately thought, oh, I want to do Mallorca again next year and do it, you know, and then it's like, no, I don't actually do. I, I don't know. I don't know at this stage what um, I, I learned so much. I live such a beautiful experience. Um, I know it, things don't happen twice the same way. Um, and um, I think because I like mountains, and because I'm going to South America, I think I want to do um, some rides in the Andes. And I had this crazy idea a couple of years ago where I said I want to do the longest climb in the world, which I don't know if it's the longest climb in the world, but it's called the longest climb in the world, which is 60 kilometers of climbing, where you start, I don't know, at 600 meters above sea level and you end up like at way over 3,000 above sea level. And it's 60 kilometers of climbing, not crazy, um, 
what is it? It's not very steep, but it's like maybe between four and six percent. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do do it for sixty kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember being in Mallorca and I said, I didn't think about many things, but I remember one of the climbs, it's quite long, you know, like 15, like you end up climbing like 15 kilometers. And I thought, this is 15 kilometers, 60 kilometers of this, it's a long way. Am I really gonna do that? And why would I do that? And especially, you know, Mallorca has the beautiful, it's so beautiful because the roads are closed. So there's no traffic. Mm-hmm. And in Colombia, um, the climb, the 60 kilometer climb, it's got trucks and it's got, um, you know, like all lorries of different shapes and types and pollution and mad drivers and cars overtaking and, you know, um, people not being respectful of cyclists. And so it's a, it's a ride that if you look it up in YouTube, you realize that actually it's quite dangerous as well because mm-hmm. of all the cars and stuff. And I thought, hmm. There's something really beautiful about being able to be in a safe environment where you're not worrying about trucks and getting run over and all of that stuff. And I wonder whether that would really spoil my riding, like my experience, you know, the traffic and all of that. And so I left wondering whether that's something I really would want to do or not. Okay. Um, so so on one hand i i do want to do it and on the other hand i might not do the 60 kilometer ride just because of that um having said that then i think well then that brings me back to there are other mountains in south america there are other mountains in colombia there are other routes that are not as crazy and they might not be famous and they might not be in magazines and they might not attract crazy European riders that take out every screw in their bike so that it's light and they have a support car that gives feeds them so that they don't have to carry bottles or anything, you know, no weight, uh, so that they can do it in four hours. <laughs> uh, um, so I might not do a well-known road, but I will find routes that are less frequented by traffic and do those. So Latin America is, the Andes are certainly in the cars i just don't know which right <laughs> that's yeah. absolutely, i love that actually that, that almost suits you more doesn't it because if the whole journey along the way has been developing and been able to be independent then why follow the crowd uh really when you're choosing your next ride and i'm sure you've been inspired by i don't know if you, if you finished the drama llama drama is that inspired i you? haven't finished it but it's very inspiring which Leads me to the other thing is I, you know, bikes where they are not road bikes, but like hybrid bikes where you have bigger tires, you can go more on gravel as well as road and you can carry stuff with you. Sounds like a dream. Um, And I know that's slightly different to road cycling, um, but that it's where, you know, and also meeting Laura Mm -hmm. um, kind of gave me that flavor of what about a bike with slightly bigger wheels um, that I can explore and I don't want to become 100% an explorer but I think adventure um, Mm -hmm. certainly is the word that appeals the most Ah, and I do have another thought of something I want to do which will probably please you and it's the 500 thingy in north in the north of Scotland Oh, wow, yes. Because the guys I met who are from Scotland, um, we shared the story, you know, because I said I would like to do it, but without a support car and without having to carry my luggage. And they had this brilliant idea of um, just post in a little envelope clothes that they can either then donate to a charity or dispose of after you use them every night. And then you don't have to carry anything with you. And I thought, yeah, that's the way to do it. I love that. I love that. If only you could rely on the Royal Mail to deliver it on time. <laughs> yeah, I think I probably deliver it weeks before I arrive. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then that sounded like a really good thing to do. So I think f- for me, rather than events right now, what is in my mind is exploring routes, exploring mm-hmm. things where I can go for four days, for example, be self-supportive, supported. And, and explore. Um, I think Alison has also been really inspiring in that sense because she, you know, has done loads of miles on her bike 
go and visiting people and places. So it might be, but obviously that has to include lots of hills. So Scotland appeals, Devon also appeals, France suddenly seems to appeal a little bit. Oh. There's lots of French rides that can be done. And uh, there was talk about maybe going to do the Mont Ventoux because that's, you know, appeals as well. Like, you know, maybe some of those big names in the in the um, French Alps. So yeah, so I think I think there are a few of those that can be done. Amazing, amazing. And I love you're talking my language when you talk about adventure and the, just taking a different type of approach, not just purely a road bike. I think, oh yes, yes. Um, no, that's that's definitely the way to go. I see all sorts of adventures ahead for you. Um, so I am going to stay on, stay on the thing, but I'm going to stop us recording. <laughs> uh, but I just want to say again, a huge congratulations. It's been so awesome to see you develop and see you along this journey. And then, yes, being cheering over here, cheering you on in Mallorca virtually to see you finish the event. So amazing. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.